everybody. I wanted to tell you about Anchor. It's what I'm using to make this podcast. I use it not only because it's free, but because it's easy. I can record and broadcast anything and everything right from my phone, or I can use a computer. It allows me to edit things, and it has everything I need just in one place. And not only that, you can make money from your podcasts. But what you have to do is you've got to go download the free Anchor app. Go to anchor.fm just to get started. And then send me a link. I want to hear your podcast. Hey everybody, it's Sam with West Virginia Overtime. And it is late Football Friday, and I wasn't sure about this week. I I really thought that this week might be a little boring uh, and maybe not real exciting. Thought there might be a lot of blowouts and not very many good close games or anything. I kind of got surprised. Yeah, there were a lot of blowouts. But I want to start off with three awesome stories tonight. And the first one I want to start off with is, hey, congratulations to the Roan County Raiders. You went into Ravenswood and had a great battle with them and played some awesome defense. Roan held Ravenswood to under 100 yards and got a big, big win. Not only that, they had some buddies from Clay County come over and they showed up in at Ravenswood to cheer on Roan and to show their support for them. And I can't give a big enough shout out to the Clay County football team for doing that and showing what a class act they are. I also want to give big, big props to Wyoming East for rocking Pikeview 49 to 13. And I know a lot of you are saying, well, so? Sam, why are you even talking about that? Wyoming East is supposed to be really good this year. Well, I told you, I had a feel-good story for you. How about sophomore Lydia Crook being the first female football player at Wyoming East to hit a point-after score? And not only did she hit one, no, 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 she went seven for seven on PATs. So congratulations, Lydia and Wyoming East. And I want to give you guys an update on a story that that West Virginia Overtime put in in the middle of the South Charleston Hurricane game. I want to give you an update on Austin Womack. He's the quarterback for Hurricane, and it looked like he had gotten a head or neck injury, and they wanted to be really extremely cautious. So there was a 30-minute delay in the game while the paramedics were checking him out. They were waiting for an ambulance, putting him on the stretcher, and taking him to a local hospital. He was moving his extremities, and he was conscious. He was talking to the trainers, but Coach Taylor wanted to make sure that everything was okay, didn't want him getting hurt any further, and wanted to totally take care of him. So big shout out to Coach Taylor for stepping in and saying, no, you're going to the hospital. So Austin got checked out at the hospital, and it's not expected to be anything real serious. They think he has um, some muscle um a muscle injury, but uh, Austin, we are all out praying for you and hoping that you're okay. But let's continue on with that South Charleston game, because South Charleston won this game with 341 left. Hurricanes Bumgarter um, tried for an onside kick, and it looked to be like the perfect onside kick. Well, then it took a bounce, and it bounced right into Romeo Dunham's hands, who returned it for 57 yards. 
for the final touchdown in South Charleston's 28-14 win. Um, Christian Hill from Hurricane had another just painful night with South Charleston's defense. He carried the ball 17 times and only got 22 yards. And let me tell you, this kid is awesome. Christian Hill is a player and a half, and he's just an awesome person. And I hate to see him struggling like that. But with this win, South Charleston's playoff hopes, they stay alive. And we're going to be talking more about them in the preview for next week because I look for them to go up in the playoff rankings and uh, really keep their playoff hopes alive. We're going to be talking about the playoffs more in just a minute, but let me give you some scores real quick. Oh, I was a little worried about Pendleton County. Pendleton County's uh, up there in the rankings, and it looked like East Hardy was going for the upset until 620 left to go in the game, and Pendleton scored and got brought home the win 7 to 6 against East Hardy. Princeton beat Ripley 42 to 34 and St. Mary's beat South Harrison 25 to 8. I was looking around and was interested in some Cardinal Conference scores. So, the Sissonville score popped up, and Sissonville won 42-18 to against Wayne. But let me tell you, I feel sorry for them, because they didn't get any bonus points. Uh, that is what the season's going to come to down to, I think, in double A, is bonus points. And by Sissonville doing their job and playing an outstanding game, they're not getting rewarded for it because Wayne is 0 and 8. So because they don't have any wins, Sissonville didn't pick up any bonus points. So that means they can't jump over anybody. So I'm not sure I like this whole bonus points thing. I know it, it evens it out. It makes teams play other good teams. But Sissonville didn't have a choice in playing in Wayne tonight. They had to play him because it's a conference game. And so I'm I'm a little worried. Uh, just in Double A, you're going to see a lot of teams here in the next couple of weeks. They're not going to get any bonus points or very little bonus points. And we're going to talk about that with the last game we're going to be talking about. Let's talk about Bluefield. Bluefield beat O'Keel 41 to 13. And then Doddridge County, they smoked Valley 56-0. And, of course, we definitely can't leave out Martinsburg. Everybody is wondering, hey, did Martinsburg continue their streak? Well, yes, they did. Uh, Martinsburg took it to Jefferson 60-21. to uh, Musselman beat Washington 56-15. to And North Marion put it on uh, Philip Barber 47-6. to But the game that I want to talk about... <clears throat> that I kind of feel sorry about is a homecoming game that happened in my Putnam County. Midland Trail beat Buffalo 7-6. to six. And does this mean Buffalo's playoff hopes are over? You know, I said earlier on the pregame show ago that I was picking Buffalo to win this game and that Buffalo really needed to control their own destiny and they needed to score some wins in almost every game left and they just fell short tonight so i don't i don't know buffalo may not control their destiny now they they may have to hope for some teams to lose in order to sneak into the playoffs now because i'm just i'm a little worried about them um wanted to make sure to take a break and tell you guys how excited I am. We are finally up and running on a lot of podcast platforms. We're on Google Podcasts now, Breaker. Uh, we've been up on Anchor. And we're on Spotify and Radio Public now. But the one that I'm super, super excited about is Pocket Casts. 
I I love Pocket Casts. I've been a Pocket Cast user now for about a year and a half, and I believe it has got all of the the features. And I am not doing an advertisement for it for them. If any of you are listening to this on Anchor. Please continue to, if that's what you like. But if you're looking for something to switch over to to listen to some other people's podcasts, uh, please go to Pocket Casts. Now, if you do listen on Anchor, I want to remind you guys that there's a voice message button there. And you can record a voice message button and shoot me any messages or any shout-outs or any yelling you want to do about anything I've said, um, feel free to hit that and and sit, send me a message. Or hit us up on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, or you can email us. We're at wvovertime at gmail.com. So let's get back after it. Um, Capital and Woodrow Wilson. Capital went down to Beckley and... Um, Man, oh man, I tried to find out some things about this game other than the score, which was 42 to 7 capital. But every tweet that that Woodrow Wilson was putting out and the stuff that the papers were saying was Chance Knox is fast. Well, guess what? I already knew that. I already know how good Chance Knox is. I wanted some stats. I wanted some picks. I wanted something. But um, I'm excited. Capital is keeping the playoff hopes alive with a big win tonight. And so we're going to be talking more about Capital coming up this week on the previews. Well, go ahead. Tell me how bad I was wrong. I, I decided, hey, I'm going to pick a game, and in the previews, I picked one game. And then I thought at the last minute, no, 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 no. I truly believe in Zach Davis and the Nitro Wildcats. So I'm going to throw an extra pick in there, and I picked Nitro to upset uh, Winfield. Well, guess what? Winfield took it to me and Nitro. Nick Vance must have heard me and got mad because he had 10 carries for 82 yards and four touchdowns at halftime. And Winfield blew out uh, Nitro 54 to 13. Nitro Wildside. The cheering section, the student section, you guys, you got to get them pumped up when I pick them. Um, I'm not down, though, on the Nitro Wildcats. I still believe in Zach Davis, but, um, man, Winfield, they're, they're showing up right at the right time. Parkersburg South uh, beat Greenbrier East. 42 to 10. Um, Brandon Penn, who a lot of people up north are writing me about, he had six touchdowns uh, tonight. He had four passing and two uh, rushing. And they're telling me that he's an awesome all around athlete and that he needs to be up for some awards and that the people down here around Charleston and in the southern part of the state aren't giving Brandon Penn a look. So I'm going to be watching him the next couple weeks. I want to see what he can do. And can I call out Mingo Central? Hello, Mingo Central and all your fans. Congratulations on beating Hoover 47 to 6. But hello, when you're up on that mountain, can you send me a smoke signal? I need to know what you guys are doing. I know it's hard to get a wireless signal up there and send stuff out, but send me a smoke signal about Drew Hatfield trying to break those records. I have looked everywhere tonight and I can't find any information on his yards, on uh, how many receptions he had, and how many touchdowns he had. He's going for a national record, being in the top eight in the nation, and breaking West Virginia state records. So, Mingo, you guys have got to find a way to get us some information. Uh, GW, uh, over Riverside, 42-6. to Alexander had five, 
five touchdown passes. And this brings GW to five and three after their 0 and 2 start. People were so down on GW and Steve Edwards um, after that 0 and 2 start. And that team has really came together and started to play. And they might be looking at a playoff berth. Now, they may not be very high, but with the way they're playing, they may shock somebody or at least give them a really good game. J.J. Roberts and uh, Cabell Midland beat Huntington tonight uh, 28-7. to And uh, that game, from what I understand, wasn't really even that close. That Cabell Midland was looking good. Let's talk about my game of the week. The game of the week that I picked a couple days ago was uh, Bridgeport versus Kaiser. Kaiser was number three in AA, and uh, Bridgeport was number four. And I thought this was going to be like a big defensive struggle and a low-scoring game. And Bridgeport said, um, no, no, not quite. Bridgeport beat Kaiser 28-7, to and I mean, they scored right off the bat. Carson Winky for, for Bridgeport had three touchdowns. And Ryan Decker, who's a reporter up there, was talking about how Bridgeport just poured it on, and their defense just shut Kaiser down. Um, he said that Bridgeport looked absolutely awesome. So I'm looking forward to seeing them and how they continue to play because I think this bonus points thing comes into play now. I think Bridgeport jumps over Polka. As bad as I hate to say it, Polka had climbed up to number two. The people and the fans and the community down here were all excited that they were number two in double A. And I think this bonus points thing kills them because Bridgeport just picked up seven bonus points from Kaiser. And Polka didn't pick pick up bonus points from Scott tonight. So I I think Bridgeport is going to jump over Polka in the standings, and it could cost Polka playing, uh, you know, a worse team in the playoffs. Both Bridgeport and Polka are going to have a first-round playoff game, but man, oh man, you you really want to play a lesser team and, and save it when you get in the playoffs. Upset of the night. Upset of the night has to be Point Pleasant over man. Seven to nothing. Man. Man, hillbillies. Come on, y'all have been calling out everybody all season. You called out Wyoming East. You've been calling out Polka and Mingo. Now, this week, you were calling out uh, Point Pleasant. Well, I'll tell you what. Point Pleasant got up to play. It was a defensive struggle until the freshman quarterback, Evan Roach, got in for a touchdown. And... Point Pleasant just held them off. You know, in the beginning of the season, everybody was talking about Point Pleasant. They were saying how good they could be. But then Point Pleasant has been the team of West Virginia that has totally gotten screwed as far as not being able to fill their schedule by having too many buys. They've had three buys. They had teams scheduled uh, from Ohio to play, and they were considered ineligible. Point Pleasant has just gotten a raw deal, and so when they finally start playing somebody, they showed up to play, and they beat man 7 to nothing. And then let's talk about the tweet of the night. And probably the player of the night. I was going through Twitter and was just looking at stuff. I already knew about this game. I had watched some of it and had seen that Ethan Payne, in the first 23 seconds, scored twice. The boy is on. Believable. He ended up with 193 yards on five. Yes, I said five. One, two, three, four, five carries. He had four touchdowns. Uh, 
rushing touchdowns, and he had one kickoff return touchdown. So, he carried the ball five times. Four of them were touchdowns, and one of them he got tackled. And then Polka didn't play him the rest of the night. So, I, I was looking around and and was trying to find out, like I said, a smoke signal from Mingo. And the tweet of the night from John Tony from Polka, he told everybody what Ethan Payne's warm-up routine was. And so I'm going to let you in on the secret. Here's the tweet. Ethan Payne's warm-up r- routine is... Up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B, A, start. And if anybody doesn't recognize that, that is beast mode. And that's what this boy has been. He's my Kennedy Award winner pick right now. I know we got more games, but just because he's a great person and he's a great kid and a great player... I'm picking him for the Kennedy Award winner. Who else can have 193 yards on five carries? Who else can score twice in 23 seconds? And then come off the field and congratulate everyone of his offensive line. His first comment was talking about his block party and talking about his offensive line and how awesome they are. How great of a kid is that? Poco with the big win, 47 to nothing. We're going to be having um, a lot more podcasts this week. We're hoping to do some special topic podcasts. Uh, I've been asked to do another one on Disney, so that'll be coming up. Uh, probably will definitely be doing a um, high school sports uh, thing, probably maybe on um, basketball shooting, maybe free throw shooting or jump shot shooting or something like that. And uh, we'll be giving you the high school previews. We'll be probably coming to you um, maybe tomorrow night, but it will probably be Sunday uh, with all of the sectional soccer scores and the setup for regionals if uh, we can get locations. If we can't get the location set by Sunday and find out where they're all, where they are, then it may be Monday before we come out with like an all soccer uh, regional podcast, and then we'll also in that same podcast be talking about volleyball sectionals. So you guys, let me know what you think and. Who do you like? Who who are you picking? So, like I said, hit me up on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter, and hit me up on email. We're at West Virginia Overtime at gmail.com. See you soon. Bye.